now the German way. For millions of young people in America, the chances for higher education are slight and few. The costs are so high and resources so lacking that education has become an almost unattainable goal. The massive privatization campaign waged by businesses for generations has boosted the growth of private schools and colleges. And these businesses are burgeoning, even as black public schools are collapsing and historical black colleges are suffering for want of more students. Is there a solution to this problem? It is remarkable that a near neighbor, Cuba, offers free education from kindergarten to college to all comers. Even medical school is free and Cuba trains doctors the world over. Now Germany has announced free education, not only for Germans, but for foreigners residing there. Their view is that education is a social good and enables workers to contribute to society. Meanwhile, in the U.S., costs keep rising and enrollments keep slipping. Some students gain an education, but they are then saddled with decades of debt, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars for a professional degree. America isn't apt to follow Cuba's lead, fearing the taint of socialism. But what about Germany, a country of 82 million people, the economic powerhouse of Europe? Free education for all may someday become an American idea. From Imprisoned Nation, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio. Oh, yeah, black sun in the hizzle. Oh, but shizzle dizzle. We got an excellent show here today. But first, I want to say the views and opinions and that of the arena is not reflect that of Comcast, its staff, or its affiliates. With that being said, viewer discretion is advised. Starting to my right, I'm going to have everybody introduce themselves. My name is Marissa McCall Dodson. I'm the policy director and attorney at the Georgia Justice Project. My name is Gidon Ben Yashara Al, Habiz, your servant. My name is Vincent Cheeks. Actor, activist, overall entertainer. You know who I am. Yeah. All right. You want to give us some announcements real quick? There, yeah, let's get into this quick announcement. Uh, October 2014, as I've told you all before, is a month of resistance to mass incarceration, police terror, repression, and the cr criminalization of a generation. We pledge no more. Black lives matter. Latino lives matter. All lives matter. Mass incarceration, police murder, torture in prisons, criminalization of a generation, attacks on immigrants. We say no more. We will not be silent. We will resist until the shameful horrors really are no more. Coming up this weekend, this Saturday, October 11th, the Stop Mass Incarceration, Police Terror Repression, and the Criminalization of a Generation concert, conference, and panel starting at 1 p.m. till 5 p.m. Uh, at the CWA building, 279 Logan Street, Atlanta, Georgia, featuring Jasiri X, Stickman, Carl Dix, who is one of the original founders of Stop Mass Incarceration, uh, Major Neil Franklin, Pastor Kenneth Glasgow. That is October 11th, 1 to 5 p.m., CWA building, 279 Logan Street, Atlanta, Georgia. And on October 22nd is the National Day of Protest to Stop Police Brutality and the Repression and the Criminalization of a Generation, 4 o'clock at Woodruff Park, downtown Atlanta, Edgewood, and Peachtree Street. Please come out and join us if you will. Thank you very much. And with that, we're going to get into the show with our guest today, which fits right into our, our month of resistance, Ms. Marissa Dotson. Uh, she works for the Georgia Justice Project. Um, they're a group here at in Atlanta that represents indigent clients, correct? Uh, I'm going to give you the floor and let you explain a little bit about uh, what your group does. Sure. Uh, so for the last uh, little over 28 years, the Georgia Justice Project, uh, which is on Edgewood, right behind the King Center in Atlanta, we have been um, taking a holistic approach to criminal defense. 
um, offering criminal assistance, criminal defense to people who can't afford attorneys in okay. the Atlanta uh, area, Fulton and DeKalb counties. Um, along with legal representation, we um, have social workers. Uh, we believe that the only way to end the cycle of poverty and crime is to deal with uh, the issues that are affecting um, the people that are encountering the criminal justice system. Um, right. uh, the, the third piece of the work that I started about uh, a little over six years ago is called the Coming Home Program. It is a program that tries to assist um, in reducing the barriers to opportunity that are caused by having a criminal record in Georgia. Uh, it's three-tiered. Uh, the first tier is direct service. We are assisting people with criminal records um, issues, expungements, sealings, corrections, okay. that kind of thing, um, advocating to employers and housing authorities and licensing boards and such that uh, individuals should be granted opportunity in spite of their criminal record. The second piece of the work is around education and outreach. We are trying to get to um, all of the communities affected by this issue across the state of Georgia okay. um, and talking to uh, those that are directly affected by this issue. Um, the mm -hmm. community service providers that work with them, lawyers, advocates, judges, legislators, lawmakers, um, the business community, just about anybody who will listen to us um, is the way that I like to say it, to get, about, get out the issue about how difficult it is for people in Georgia to move on when they have a record. Okay. Um, we are actually the, the second worst state in the, in the country um, as ranked by the Legal Action Center in, in uh, New York. Wow, okay. When it wow. comes to, you know, and, and this, this group kind of looked at various categories, uh, employment, housing, licensing, education, family adoption, that kind of thing, immigration, all the places where a criminal record can right. impact your life and found Georgia ranked 48th um, or 49th, if you will, out of the 50 states. So, um, or the 51 if you include D.C. So trying to get out what it is, to, what it means to have a record in Georgia, which feeds into the third part of the work, which is our policy work. Okay. Um, and that is uh, where I spend most of my time, and that is in advocating for reforms to Georgia law that will make a difference. Um, and so we started with the expungement law, um, which we recently were able to change in the last several years. Um, and the plan is that we will work every year to try to continue to advocate for uh, responsible reforms that really will impact this community. Okay, okay. Thanks, Marissa. Uh, you gave us a lot of information there, a lot of good information uh, right. that the people of Atlanta uh, definitely need to know. Uh, so let me ask you this. What is the criteria for being a candidate for the Georgia Justice uh, Project? Uh, do you mean for the, the uh, clients, the people, you the represent. people that we represent right. that are facing criminal charges in Atlanta? Correct. Um, so uh, we have a, a bright line, if you will, of criteria that we consider um, when we're looking at uh, taking on a client. But I would say generally to visit our website for that information. Okay. Um, every case is different. Um, so I don't want to put out there that we absolutely will not take certain cases. Um, but I, I, I will generally say that we have taken everything from a small, you know, traffic case, um, depending on the implications of it, or a um, misdemeanor that's, that's in municipal court, okay. all the way to a very serious murder case. So wow. um, we, we, we are trying to reach, you know, a vast swath of people that are um, encountering the criminal justice system in Atlanta, if that, if that helps. Okay. Is there an age range or an age limit? Um, no, there, no, there's not. I mean, there, there are some cases that we, we traditionally haven't taken. So, for example, um, sex crimes uh, we generally um, haven't taken uh, for, for various reasons. Drug trafficking cases we haven't really done um, a significant amount of those for uh, various reasons. But I, I don't want to put out there that we absolutely won't. And then uh, there just might be the, you know, uh, circumstance where we deem it appropriate to kind of insert ourselves and, and advocate. Okay. Uh, now, I did see on your website that you do not take, like you said, domestic violence, drug trafficking, sex crimes, federal cases, uh, child abuse cases. Um, well, I got a question. Why not federal cases? Um, so uh, our, our efforts are in state court, um, and okay. we don't have the, ex the experience to do federal, the federal court and federal laws. And it's a smaller percentage of people that are impacted in the federal side of things, but our experience in the attorneys that are in office, we are uh, only uh, experienced in state court. Yes. So you're saying there's a greater need on the state level for the services that That's you right. all render? That's okay. right, yes. Okay, okay. okay. You know, as it pertains to the system at large and what you do, just praise the most high because 
there are few I'm advocates for Russia. <laughs> well, for her efforts. Absolutely. Her and, and our organization. Her organization. And the most high. No, no, no they're going to praise True. Marissa <laughs> and her organization yes, for their hard work, Gideon. Okay. All right. That's okay. just fine. I'm sorry. And, and, but see, the issue, though, for me, <laughs> is the system and its lack of transparency. And because it doesn't have transparency, many of our people are entrapped in this system because of we are poor or because we don't have the resources and the network or the knowledge that it takes in order to fight the system. What would you say your organization does as it pertains to education? Mm -hmm. Because it's one thing to uh, extract a person from a particular situation, mm -hmm. but did you educate in the process? Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the, the, the uh, program that I spend most of my time in is in, in that collateral consequences of a criminal record piece. And that is the most important piece of the work, is really understanding uh, what the collateral consequences of a criminal record are, how you can advocate for yourself and understand how the system affects your life, um, and when, when it's time to activate and mobilize your voice for change. So um, spending time talking about what we were talking about earlier when it comes to your rights when you are um, dealing with a police officer, when it comes to your rights when, you're, when you are on probation, understanding what you can be revoked for and what you cannot be revoked for. Um, understanding the child support is another issue that really affects our community. Mm -hmm. um, understanding the court system enough to know how to get your court, your uh, child support reduced or mm -hmm. um, dealing with those kinds of issues proactively. So I would say that the, the, the best way to uh, change the system is to understand it. That's right. Now, how, again, it, it, see, this is a, a, it, one of the things we get caught up in as a people is being reactionary. That's right. The reactionary issue is a response to the reaction of the course is your organization. Yes. The other side is to be proactive mm -hmm. because, again, if it were organizations like Rainbow Push, mm -hmm. People's Agenda, who have within their organizations uh, criminal justice committees, mm -hmm. if these committees were in the court systems when our people are introduced, yeah. They could advocate for them mm -hmm. at that juncture. Right. Mm -hmm. See, right. this is the problem that I have mm -hmm. with many other organizations because rather than being react proactive, mm -hmm. they are reactive. And at the end of the day, these people are still entrapped in the system. Like when we were talking about transparency earlier, right. where they, many of our family members have records and they don't even know it. Mm -hmm. There has been an offense that's been <laughs> put on the record. And right. this, tell us about the young lady that you were talking about and what happened to her and it, how it illustrates that, how they could use records to, and you don't even know that you even have a case against you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so what Gideon is referring to, I was on the Georgia Justice Project website and they have uh, an area for client testimonies. So I read the story of Andrea and in Andrea's case, um, she got stopped for a traffic violation. Um, and when she got stopped for the traffic violation, they told her she had a 10-year warrant out for her arrest, right. uh, which stemmed from a public neighborhood brawl that uh, Andrea was involved in. And she didn't even know that she had a warrant on her because when the warrant was issued, they didn't have a phone number or an address for her. Right. So now she's got this bench warrant uh, issued for her unbeknownst to her and she's just going about her daily life like you know everything is cool because she did say I, I remember she did say uh, after the 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 public brawl incident for about a year or two she called the court checking on uh, on this situation and on this case and would get to run around or brush to the side and exactly. so after a couple of years she left it alone um, and so when she got arrested, she did spend a couple of nights in jail on mm. this warrant, but she got in contact with the Georgia Justice Project, mm -hmm. and they took her case, and they were able to uh, eventually get it uh, dismissed, correct? Mm -hmm. we were wow. You're right. We were able to resolve that situation. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I got a quick question. You talked about uh, indigent, you know, be basically people can't afford. Uh, and how does that work for the expungement? I mean, how is that funded? So if, you know. So, uh, same is true. Um, so it doesn't, you, it does, you do not require an attorney to do an expungement in Georgia. Okay. Um, but uh, if you want an attorney to help you with it, um, most attorneys will charge a, a very high rate. Um, and even though it's only a, a paperwork or before mm -hmm. the new law, at least, it was only an administrative task. 
Um, so what we, are, what we do is offer the, the service to the community, to people who cannot afford that kind of representation. Right. Um, and especially when it is, I need a job. I've been turned down for a job mm -hmm. because of my criminal history. How then can they afford to pay someone to help them, you know, clean their record up enough right. so that they can right. get a job? It, it's, right. it doesn't it's, make much sense. Yeah, because my thing is, it, it's simple paperwork. Why hire an attorney? That's for, right. I mean, because you know, the, well, the, the issue is exactly, <laughs> and you know, the, wow. before the so before the new law, um, the the issue is, you know, you kind of. Who knows how you get a record expunged? You, you would ask at an arrest, the, maybe the arresting agency, or mm -hmm. look online, and they, you know, show you this form, and the form bounced through various agencies and had various mm -hmm. requirements. So some agencies can require certain things that others don't require. There's over 600 arresting agencies in Georgia, and each one can have their own requirements for expungement. So when you're talking about people um, who um, were never properly introduced to the system from the beginning, right. who have uh, already are a little bit intimidated about the process to deal with this record. They are looking for, for uh, assistance with that. Right. And so there are attorneys and non-attorneys who will take advantage of that um, desperation that that person feels and charge mm -hmm. anywhere up to you know $1,000 for something wow. that yeah. um, is really a matter of you know filling out the first page of a three-page application and mailing it in with a couple Ooh, other geez, requirements. Geez. Okay. okay. The poor community oh, thousand dollars. Oh, go they ahead. Can. <laughs> capitalism. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Ben. Now on the on the matter of expungements, um, is 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 everybody eligible for expungement? Is every offense eligible for expungements? Great question. So um, the the law has recently changed, and while it's not um, the best. It is much improved from where it was. Okay. So under the old law, uh, if you were acquitted, so found not guilty by a judge or jury, did not qualify for expungement from your criminal history. Right. You wouldn't need it then. Right, right. Well, well, no, no, no. You, you definitely need it. Okay. So if you were charged, um, Mr. Cheeks, with armed robbery. Okay. And you maintained your innocence and, you know, stuck it out and sat in jail for a year saying, I didn't do this. Right. Right. You face a jury which is, you know, 90, you know, 90 percent plus of cases never even go to trial, right? Right, right that's right. You take your case all the way to trial and get a jury of somebody's peers. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I like the way you worded that. <laughs> yes, man, yes. To yes. acquit you, right? Exactly. So that's wonderful, right? You think, good. Right. Breath of fresh air. I'm thinking mm, everything's No, 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 done no. I'm drunk. an employer, Mr. Okay. Cheeks. Have you ever been arrested or convicted of a crime? I've been arrested. Oh, that's right. And what do I see when I pull up your criminal history? That you were arrested for armed robbery. Right. And then you right. tell me right. okay. you were acquitted, and I think probably on a technicality. Right. Or, right. But you're still judging right. me and viewing and me know, as a criminal. And what right. we know from all the studies is that there are there's a large percentage of employers that consider arrests even when they didn't lead to conviction. Right. Oh, wow. As wow. already now a deterrent. Yes. So you so that the idea that you wouldn't need it, yeah. I think, was the. Um, <laughs> wow. Perhaps at some point someone thought, of course you wouldn't need a thing. You kind of cleared right. your name, but there still is You're a need. Not. That's wow. exactly right. Because the record. That's exactly right. Well, see, therein lies the issue of transparency. Right. How many of Back to that. My <laughs> right. whole wife, because uh, my house was in my name, but when we got married, we, because she was the one that was working, we put it in her name. I had a car, my, uh, my van broke down. Sitting in it, code enforcement came, you need to move this vehicle. I'm saying, I want to use it for storage, you know, store my, move the vehicle, okay? We went to court on this issue. We have, at that time, we had a physical address and a mailing address. On their forms, they said, if you have an address other than your resident, this, fill it out here. It's exactly what I did. This right. is my mailing address. Right. This is my physical address. Right. Guess what they sent the information to? The physical, physical. <laughs> We let them know, and they came and arrested my wife, wow. put her in jail. We had to, I mean, she spent, you say, well, it was just a day or two days. Well, no, that's it's, too long. I, yeah, <laughs> that's too long, too long out your life. the bro. system isn't transparent, no, we had no way of knowing. As an observer of the system, how would you say they need to correct that issue if you had some way to control that. How would you say they could correct those type of issues? Well, see, I, I think the, the, the issue is around uh, discretion mm -hmm. um, and how it's used, um, and in terms of when there's an error, who does that, um, who's, 
benefit does that inure to, or whose detriment is it, does, who suffers from that, right? right. So, wow. in the situation you're describing, when it's not your error, but some error on their part, I, I know someone who was recently arrested where it was a the the insurance company had had put the wrong letter in their VIN number. Oh man! So that their registration was uh, canceled. Yeah. <laughs> they were wow. arrested, so their license was suspended. Right. So they sh Ooh. they were arrested, picked right. up because you know when they on right. the traffic stop because of this error, right? So so I believe that you know errors are going to happen. You know someone may have just confused those addresses, but when it comes down to it. Why is it that the, the citizen is always the, the most you burdened by the air? I'm glad that you that we bringing this up and you know Gideon mentioned transparency. I, I'm I'm thinking we, uh, I mean we can set up so many jobs, making sure that people situations like that can be corrected so people don't end up in prison or jail. I'm sorry, because mm -hmm. there's a difference between jail, jail and, and prison. prison. Yeah, yeah, there is. Uh, there is. People don't know the difference. <laughs> you know. If you don't know the difference between convict and inmate, that's another whole nother stop. But go ahead and get in there. Explain this, more of this, elaborating on this transparency that you're talking about. Well, the transparency for me is one, I know the system is corrupt, which is why they don't want transparency. Right. What we're trying to define is how we can use watchdog information mm -hmm. to create transparency. Like now they're talking about with the uh, police. Put on cameras on them, cameras right. on the car. Right. If somebody want to do evil, okay, if you got a camera <laughs> in this forehead, you don't still do evil. Right. So the transparency has to do with the minds as brilliant as this it. one with organizations that can watch and interdict at the court level at the first time they go to court where due process can take place. We have issues with not having advocates. Mm -hmm. Their whole system but is whoa, the good whoa, old boy for wait, them. Get in, get in. First of all, you get on here and talk about voting as a part. In order for us to get on some of those inside that system and on the, you know, for that process, is that we have to be no, involved. Sir. Yes, no, yes, sir. You don't do. have to vote. Okay. Me. Yes, we do. First of all, you got to be registered to vote to get on the jury. So I, if I, if anything I'm happens, I'm not talking to me, about the jury, though. No, no, but I am. I am. Okay. Get in. You have to register to vote to be, even be considered a juror. You don't have to be a juror to advocate and know the law in a legal proceeding because it's open I to the agree. public. And is it? Am I not correct? You are correct. I agree. But, I would say. Okay, go ahead. Well, I, I would say that um, I, I agree with you in terms of um, advocacy at the court level. I would actually go further than that and say that um, it is more important before that. Exactly. That's right. And exactly. so, in terms of when do we enter the system and. Um, I, well, I know how you feel about that already, but when, I, <laughs> when, I, when I'm talking about the you system, learn fast. that's right, I do. <laughs> so when I talk about the system and how it changes and how being a lever uh, to push for, for reform, even if it doesn't give us the kind of broad sweeping change that we're looking for, when you're talking about moving, so, so the example I just gave you, right? So um, did, would I, I had a client under the acquittal situation we're talking about. Okay. okay, so under the old law, you couldn't get acquittals off your record. So my client, who I, I represented, I um, represented him on 11 counts, one of which was murder, five armed robberies, I believe it was, and five aggravated assaults. Okay. It was a home invasion uh, situation um, where my client was uh, supposed to be one of three. They arrested just him, right? He sat in jail for 18 months um, and uh, said, they kept saying, tell us who it is. Tell us who the other guy was. Right. Don't know. It wasn't there. Not me. Went all That's the right. way to trial, right? Uh, got acquitted of all charges in, um, and this was in DeKalb County, all, d acquitted of all charges, right? Okay. Walked out of the courtroom, lost his house. Lost, uh, his, his Social Security benefits had been um, suspended, right? So he didn't have issues with how he was going to, to activate them. Right. So here I whoa, am. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 Marissa. That's heavy. What does going to trial have to do with your Social Security? It's oh, heavy. Wait a minute. So heavy. while you are incarcerated, you do, not have, you do not have a right to your Social Security benefits. Teach. What? what? When you get, I didn't know that. Well, well I mean, oh, yeah. it, it makes it makes some sense, right, in terms of How does it make what sense we're paying. Because you're so, a ward of the state? Because, because essentially, exactly. While, we are, <laughs> while you are incarcerated, how, why, what need do you have of the Social Security check to pay your bills and expenses? You don't have any because we're taking care of them for you. Exactly. Now, I understand <laughs> what you're saying, right? The, the fact that I'm out for 30 days does not mean that, or, or 60 days, right? So a two-month 
extent. Right. I need to pay my I need to pay those bills to keep my lease, to keep my home. So I'm right. with you. But but the the law is you don't get to collect essentially what they deem twice. Well then they need to make a new law saying if you're incarcerated that all deal bills are, are debt are forgiven. How about that? Because I'm unable to pay. Well, well, well what you <laughs> mean? <laughs> well, now you, I'm trying to say what you say makes sense I'm uh, to, to a certain logic. degree, but that's not there's nothing sensical about our exactly. legal justice system. Right. Okay, Vince, nothing I'm just trying all. to use the same logic. No, well, right, right. I'm I mean, I, 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 I feel you. Well, let's, let's let, wait, wait, let me finish what I was going with that in terms of where. So, so in terms of my advocacy for him, I represented him. Right. So I represented him in court and said this man is innocent and shouldn't be here. Uh, and got him acquitted, right? When it came to advocating for him in housing, in, in you know, moving on with his life, I was there, right, to talk about, uh, to advocate for him and say, hey, this guy shouldn't be treated this way because, right? Right. But because we went to the Capitol and dealt with the Georgia General Assembly and said to the, to the General Assembly, did you know, do you understand the implications of someone going all the way through this system and being acquitted of the charges, yet having this charge follow them for the rest of their life? And right. there were several of those kinds of examples right. in addition to acquittal, right? The fact that even if you do qualify under the very limited law, that it took two years before you could get your record restricted. D talking about the problems on a practical level about what we see every day in court, what we see every day with clients, raising those issues up to say to our legislators and lawmakers, you know, councilmen, this is an issue for the community that we want you to take up and take up seriously. Means that going forward, people that are acquitted all over the state of Georgia are qualified for that record to come off of their criminal history, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So I say that to say now, is the system, are there still, is the system still wrought with problems? Is it still in many ways um, corrupt? Cor uh, right. <laughs> right. Word, right. Uh, could we, would I still say that there are, you know, the, the reforms that have happened have been drops in the bucket? Yes. But I can say that, but for, right. Right, where, where would we be? We'd right. still be in the same situation, right, with this level of trying to deal with this day to day. How many people can we help on this level when, you know, when the new law went into effect, the new expungement law? Almost two million records were, were automatically Absolutely. restricted like that. That's so wow. two million people, almost two million people in Georgia benefited from the labor at the Capitol that I, and I've never even met them, right? right? Georgia Justice Project has never even engaged with them. So I would just say to you that perhaps when you're talking about the, the, the system or the, the ways to, to impact transparency and discretion, you know, there, there this idea now about um, pre-arrest diversion. I don't know, have you heard of that? I've heard of you that. You have? Yes. Uh, jail diversion and, and pre-arrest diversion. It's the idea that you don't even give somebody a, an arrest. They're doing this, these things all across the country. Um, there's one in Seattle called Law Enforcement Against Diversion or in something like that. It's called okay. against it. Uh, I think I might have that. See, I think there's some, mm, I might have that, uh, oh, that's, that's that right, acting yeah. wrong, but it's okay. definitely lead in Seattle. And what they're doing is they have partnered with um, uh, mental health mm -hmm. professionals um, and, try, and community service providers okay. to try to partner with uh, and decide what the problem is, use their discretion to say, this person should not be arrested. This person is really dealing with a homelessness situation. Right. Let's connect you with a, a, a group that can, that can get you housing. Right. Or this seems like an issue that is, uh, has, is wrought with mental illness and our jails are no place to deal with the mentally ill. Right, so right. where can we, can we get you the help that you need? So if we were able to advocate for the kind of reforms that say that you would give discre take certain discretion away to arrest, so right, so everyone can't be arrested, that you give the law enforcement the ability to say, instead of arrest, I think it's more appropriate for you to go, right. then you're talking about diverting people from even having to be a part of the system. Because once right. we have you, once you get that arrest, you're in. So if we can figure out a way to not even get you arrested, we're moving in what I think is the right direction. What, what, what can we do as far as um, getting manual more, more people involved as far as helping your organization, number one, and get you guys more funding? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I would encourage everyone to visit our website, uh, www.gjp.org, um, and uh, you can uh, add yourself to our email list. Okay. We have an annual lobby day at the Capitol where we... Um, discuss with legislators the effects of a criminal record in Georgia, so I would encourage people to participate there. Um, I would say stay abreast to our website for webinars and series okay. that we do to ed on um, our education piece. Um, and we are, we are uh, do not take government funding. We are 
solely um, funded oh, okay. by you private You do donors. not take government do not funding. Take government wow, funding. okay. I'm not. shocked by that. So anyone why, can why send is, a personal donation. Why is that? Uh, so our, our founder uh, believe that um, you're going to love this, Gideon. <laughs> <laughs> that we needed to be outside of the system and not be have our dis, um, decision making, uh, our criteria that you went over earlier like about that. how right. how we take clients, our right. service approach and delivery. Um, we didn't want to have to be um, subject to those kinds of requirements. And so instead of taking some of the government money along the way, we instead decided we'll do it our way. Okay. And we'll do it with people and organizations and foundations that support it in our, yeah. in our, yeah, taking our approach. Well, you know, the federal judge that was in Atlanta and, and beat his wife. The, the abruzer. <laughs> the abruzer. Judge abruzer. I remember him. <laughs> beat his wife. To, almost to death. Yeah. They went in the room and it was like in, in the arena. We we do stuff intellectually, but he literally had pulled her hair, yeah. blood everywhere. everywhere. I mean, it was a... But yet, the federal judge now is going to do a community service. Diversionary program. And his record will be expunged. Yep. But this is a federal judge yep. and he... And he has a lifetime appointment. Mm -hmm. When you show behavior like that, see, Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, hands in the air. Hands up, don't shoot. Right, right. Head down. And he, see, you cannot legislate against hatred. That's right. You cannot uh, uh, defend right. against hatred. That's right. the, the way you defend against hatred is with love because that's the only antidote to the Gideon, venom Gideon. We, of we, hatred. Gideon. Now, yeah. but what, what I'm dealing with, we're talking about the system or being in and the system and uh, are not of the system, but yet we see what the system is doing to our children. So it, 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 to, to think that and see, again, great group. But right. we need groups on the front end. What is right. that group of uh, the original group on the front end? The family. Mm -hmm. Well, the family has been destroyed mm -hmm. and Forget corrupted, it. so therefore we've left victim to a system that's designed to profit off of us. Beginning, this goes beyond the so-called families. Uh, I would say power and ability. You have to still go deal with the system directly. You know what I'm saying? Like we said, do because we're here. Oh, so we, so right, we have right. to deal with it directly. Yeah, but you got people like Gideon who don't believe in voting and don't believe. Like, you know what? We're just going to pretend. But you're that the system don't your, exist. Your your history in America as a sl descendant of slaves and still Gideon. slaves in this country. But what's the, what's your what is your answer that I right. we did a um, I'm really big about um, voting, so I'd love to talk about that. Let's, let's um, do it. Let's get into it. Um, let's get into because it. I, because because you know we're doing and you might have seen this on our website. We're doing what we're calling a re-enfranchisement project. Right? right, I did see. So it. so here's so you know you know our history. You know it very well. Um, the reason why we are in the position we are in is because we had the right to vote taken away from us. Right? No. So slavery ends in 1865. Right. Well, 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 of African American plight in this country. That is when we have the highest representation of, uh, in Congress, in our, and we are, have the most number of elected officials. We are building communities. We are having families. We are mm -hmm. uh, starting businesses. You're we are voting getting Republican? married. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let it finish. It's still, it's, that's, that's not the problem just yet, right? Because that happens later on when they, when they, when give, they, up, when they give it up and yeah, say, yeah, we'll get yeah. out of the South for you, right? That's what happens with the federal government. But right after when you have 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, and really a concentration in the South to rid, uh, um, the, rid the area of the kind of hatred and, and slavery that you're talking about, we were doing pretty well, right? very well. And we've, I think that we have forgotten about that in our history because now it's like, well, what difference does it make to vote? It made a really big difference That's when right. we're talking about putting people who look like us come from our, from our experiences who have the power to make, a, to make change. What happens but, is white people 
figured out, right? So, especially Southern whites and, and the, the political ploys of the federal government and the states was like, this isn't going to work out too well for us. We, didn't, we don't really want the power to shift in this way. Right. You have too much power in your voice to vote that you're able to now change your situation. So what happens? You're talking about lynchings. You're talking about right. domestic terrorism. Totally you're right. talking about the height of the KKK. You're talking about get the grandfather clause and the black clothes. You're talking about the time when you're turning into the convict lease system and Jim figuring Crow. out another way to get that. Well, right. the, yeah, the, right, we're running right up yeah, into we're it. Yeah, we're running into that. So, and everything about that time, right, from the late 1800s through the beginning of the 19th century is to do just what they did, which is to take the vote away. 48 states now say if you've been convicted of a felony, at some point you lose your right to vote, totally. right? That is why the criminal justice system is seen as the, the new slavery, right? Because of that exception in the 13th Amendment that says except, right? Slavery is the not okay except. So what we've done, what they did, is, is uh, round up African Americans, right? And now let, put them through what is now a legal slavery through the criminal justice system. Right. And what do you do when you go in the criminal justice system? You lose your right to vote. So now we're talking about millions of people who, for whatever reason, either because of myth that they've been told that they can never vote again, or they live in states like Alabama and Mississippi where you do commit a felony and you're never going to vote again, right. right? So either you think you can't vote, which they, they're doing a really good job at, right? Or you really can't vote in Florida um, in 2000, the, the election that gave us Bush, the, right? right the Bush we're talking about debacle. hundreds of thousands of people that were denied the right to vote because of a felony conviction, and many of whom we know were African American, and that race was only lost by less than 600 votes. So do you right. mean to tell me that if we mobilized our community and activated our voice and used it, that we couldn't change this system? I can't, I can't operate in the, in the notion that voting means nothing, especially because I know what it did and how hard they, they worked to keep it away from us. And to add on to that, if voting meant nothing, you wouldn't have organizations like ALEC spending three millions of billions of dollars pouring into these um, candidacies. Not only ALEC, you had... Uh, uh, um, uh, the Koch brothers, these are all people, big money people that put a lot of money into it. So to say it doesn't vote get in. So well, I, mean, it totally I, I think that to, to, come, in, to bit, come in defense of Elder mm -hmm. Gideon a little okay. bit, I think uh, what he's saying is that uh, the voting system here for us is basically a farce. And whether you vote left or whether you vote right, you still have a left or right boot on your neck. Mm -hmm. um, that is suppressing you and holding you back and keeping you down. So if a lot of people feel that way, they feel like, what's the point anyway? Because it's a f I felt that okay. way after 2000. I when okay. I voted in 2000 and, and Bush won and I knew he wasn't supposed to win, I felt like, why, what did I even go in there for? What did I take the time out of my day <laughs> for if the system that we're trying to change use its power that it already has to get the end result that it ultimately but wanted I anyway. You, I would say to you that politics, if you're voting um, in your, the, the only time, well, the, the biggest time people come out to vote is for the president, right? Right, right. Exactly. Which is the time when your voice means the least, right? right? I don't, I don't even really encourage people, right? That's not even my thrust to vote. You can change the, I only, right. I only bring that up because of it was such a small amount, right? I know in Florida that that, that issue was going on. Right. But I'm talking about city councils. Right. I'm talking about your sheriff. I'm talking about your district attorney. Now, if you're talking about what, how crime is prosecuted in your community, right, family mm -hmm. member of the, of, of the victim, That's right. then you, these, vote, these votes in these, local, in these local municipalities for the DA or for the city council turn by like 25 votes, 30 votes. You know, that is the smallest turnout, right? right? Exactly. So if, we did, if you only chose to vote for your police sheriff, for, your, um, for the sheriff in your county, because you're like, you know what? All the rest of that stuff don't matter, but I, I know that I, what I want in my sheriff, I know what I want in my DA, right. I know what I want in my school board, right? right? Then school. you're talking about using your voice to affect your community. And I feel like, why not even, why not there? Even if you realize the, the D and the R or the blue and the red right. may be... Right. There are still places that you can use your voice to impact your community. Now, now I will say that I do vote, people. I, I, I do think that voting has a purpose. And I vote personally because I know that people died for me to have the right to vote. So I go and do it for that reason alone. But even when I'm in the voting booth, I'm simply in there like, you know, I mean, I pay attention and I follow some of the candidates. But I'm basically in the booth like, 
okay, I'll play the game and I'll see how it turns out well, well, in the end. But why don't see? There's, there's <clears> do I get a chance to? Oh, uh, go, go ahead, yes, sir, but I want to <laughs> say this very much. Please, please. Quick, let me just. Okay, oh, 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 go go ahead, it's go your show, sir. Right, go ahead. No, I just want to say that you know, there's a way black people vote. And there's the way that the Jews, the LGBT, and the Hispanics vote. See, the way these three groups vote is that they make demands first to each candidacy. You know what I'm saying? Black people, we just go in there and vote. You see, you see the difference here? Because so, we don't feel like we're really oh, part of the well, process. Okay, hold on, hold on a second. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example, Vince. You ever heard people say, oh, Barack Obama didn't keep his promise? Oh, he lied. You, you've heard that? Yes, Okay. I have. What demands did you ask Barack Obama? Like, what list of demands that black people come together and ask him? Name three things. We haven't. Really? More quality. Now, you know the Jews, more, more you know the Jews, you know the Jews came together and made demands before he came into office, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know this, mm -hmm. Marissa? Okay. But, but so did the homosexuals, so did the Hispanics. They pre demanded. Uh, uh, the, 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 the Equal to Marriage Act, the DREAM Act, all these things were implemented way before he got in office and they brought this to the table but as a group. You're talking about that. groups that are already comfortable being part of this system. Mm. We have never been comfortable being a part of this system. So we have this constant distrust of this system because they're always stepping on our necks and bringing us down and so, holding us. I'm so ben, ben, so, oh, hold on, so, ben, so they never stepped on the necks of the Hispanics? The gays and the Jews. Not like they do us. Oh, man. We are, That's we're, definitely true. Now. Right. We are the ultimate poster That's child true. for oppression and suppression. Okay. Absolutely. I mean, wait a minute. We got Barack Obama. We got we have, we have a, we have a we puppet in Congress Barack Obama. We have a puppet in <laughs> Barack Obama. Black can we get, can so we get so Brother Giddy in here, right. please? <laughs> please, please. Right. Let me just first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I am I'm so honored to hear the beauty and an intellect and the chronology that she was able to just off the Right, right. Oh. She was very <laughs> I mean, well spoken. Historically mm -hmm. accurate and astute. Yes, sir. Correct. Profound. Here I comes mean, my butt. genius. Thank you. And Correct. what she illustrated is That's that what happens when you concentrate on reality, Giddy. But go ahead. Excellent. I'm sorry. Excellent point. Now, but what she illustrated in that was the change. See, what she idealized was the time in which Whitey, before he knew our genius and supremacy, allowed us free reign. Right. Mm -hmm. Then she said, oh, they said, <laughs> do you look what he said? <laughs> Do. The same they thing they do. said in Egypt. We're gonna to have to deal wisely with this. Right, right. Because but, they're but, being, hold on, let's okay, finish. Right, right. finish. Because right. they're going more and mightier, and they might throw in with our enemy. So what she say in the use of the vote? What it did was gave us a platform when there, the playing field was equal. Right. But then what happened? Jim Crow. She went down the whole line. She even led up this. <laughs> led up the Jim Crow. But we these are got still... to Jim Crow. But hold on, hold on. This is the point. And this is in, he don't have to speak, you know, he did advocate because we understand as well as you do okay. that the system hates us. It, it was designed to destroy us. Now, wait a minute. Your vote is a process of acceptance of the system's authority to make you think it can affect change when in fact you're just authorizing their abuse of you by supporting and signing your name to Speak it. Speak on it, bro. Okay. See, the oh. issue of uh, oh. being able to be legally defiant is not accepting the artificially created system of oppression where they've been lying to us from the very beginning and say if you keep signing this sheet here, we will change our ways. You can't change hating, hate by that. They have to be systematically, system has to be overhauled and destroyed, and a new system has. That's why I love Barack Hussein Obama. And I've said it in the arena before. He said one thing during that interview, which sent shockwaves and now have him and his family literally running for their lives. He said, you cannot change the system from the inside. Voting right. is the inside mechanism for you, what the populace are being told, Goyim, <laughs> is to change the system. Right. He said it, and when he said it, they've been trying to kill him and his family. They found four shell casings in the white okay, house with oh, yeah, yeah, children yeah, yeah. Yeah. and his mother. Yeah. Then they just sent a white boy in there to try. But, but I would the, say, I guess, 
you know, I hear, I hear what you're saying in terms of, um, a and to your point about uh, being proactive. <laughs> well, what you said before about being proactive mm -hmm. and presenting an agenda and, and the idea that you can say someone broke a promise to you but didn't, right. and, but didn't ask them to make one with you. And I would say to that that if what you, how you are exercising your right to that your voice is to sit back and see what shows up in front of you and deciding, well, I guess I got to go with this box, this box, and this box because those boxes are wh whatever those boxes are, and these ones I hope might help <laughs> right. out a little bit more. If that's the if that is the way that you are using your voice, then I think you're right that there is no way to change when you're just reacting to what's being put in front of you and deciding to to you know choose the lesser of two evils. But if what you're if what you're doing is what Georgia Justice Project tries to do in terms of mobilizing a community and moving an issue forward. If what I'm doing is meeting with a candidate who's running That's right. or who's thinking about running, and I say, I represent this community, yes. these are my concerns, this is an issue that affects the constituency that you are running for, and I'm going to be looking to hear from you That's right. what your thoughts are on one, two, three, four, and five. And if what happens is that person says, I had never thought about that before, or I disagree with you there, then I can find myself another candidate. That's right. So what I think, is, right. what I think the problem is, is that there isn't, there is uh, maybe for in intimidation or the idea that, they don't, that there's not a relatability to the people that are currently in office, that we don't present our uh, concerns right. during, bef during elections. We don't bring in and say. No, we don't. So, in terms of Barack Obama, and this is one of one of the issues that I have in terms of our after. Oh, we that ignorant. Uh, I mean, are you oh, literally? Let him finish. Let him finish. Let him finish. Let him finish. Let him Present Giddy. our concern. Giddy. Are we going to buy into that? Giddy, you're, you're derailing the no, ship right I don't, now. No, I, I don't think that we. I mean, see, I think. Well, what do we? What are we presenting? Right. With the solution. What are we saying in terms of what, what kinds of issues affect our community and what we think would change it? And I think that what happens, and I don't, I don't fault part people in the community for feeling this way. There, has be, there is a, um, now we are so excluded and there isn't, we, there isn't the idea that we want to even be a part of the solution because we don't think that we're even, an, even at the table to discuss it. So instead of coming up with the solution, we talk about the problems really well, and anything short of the solution that is, you know, ending racism, right? Which I'm with you. Like if I could, but that, if, if your answer to me, right, and you know, is to just d throw the criminal justice system away and let everybody go, well then that's well, no. we can't. But that's what I'm saying. What do we think if we know that the yes. criminal justice system? I think that there is something too. At least a large percentage of people, right, going being released and not having to deal with some of the issues that they're dealing with. But if we understand that we that the system is, and we want to figure out ways to change it, mm -hmm. then being rea reacting to it as a I, either I choose not to participate, which mm -hmm. only is going to continue the. Well, let me the, give me a Wait, 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 you can either decide that you're going to vote, but you're not going to participate in really getting to know the candidates or the issues or mobilizing a solution and saying, this is what I think you need to do. So you're going in the booth and saying, well, I'm a Democrat, I think. I think the Democrats are on my side, so all the Democrats. Or you say, I'm going to be involved. When, I see, when, I, when it comes to politics from my city on up, That's right. I want to know my candidates. I want them to know me. I'm going to make sure that I introduce myself. I'm going to work with organizations that, that put together platforms with an agenda for how to mobilize my community out of poverty or out of whatever the issues are. And if you are actively participating and mobilizing your community to use your voice, then I believe that that works. Yes, well, whoa, 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 get it. Stop. Now. What Marissa just described is what we call, me and Yanga call, black nationalism. You know, that we have to be held accountable for the things that we do. We can't just say this doesn't work. Now, some facts that she did mention, okay. that, since you like historical things so much, is that she pointed out fact, number one, that voting did work, okay? Not only did voting work, On but we, oh, 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 oh. 
Gideon, don't make me tear up this gavel today. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, our playing field wasn't that even. wasn't that it, level. It really wasn't. It wasn't, right? Because we were still, they were still in the South. So we ended slavery, right? Kind of, right, kind formally. Of, right. But the idea that, that what happened in a, such a short amount of time, considering that they came out of slavery with nothing, right. and right. still right. considered right. very much right. poor and trash. Thank you. But, but we're able to use the system to vote and be a part. I think, I hear you that you're, what you're saying, they weren't being as, as proactive in silencing the black oh, vote at that time. Right. Okay, but see, is this, this is where strategy comes in. Like, I think the first democratically elected uh, black Congress was in South Carolina. So apparently, these voting does work. What you're discussing, getting is, is what they did to uproot us out of it which was illegal, you know what I'm saying? So the facts that she stated did work, the voting does work. However, when you look at Tulsa, Oklahoma, you look at Auburn, you look at South Carolina, they had used illegal means to uproot us. Now, that doesn't, you don't throw out, you know, the fact that voting doesn't work. So what we do as so-called militant revolutionaries is that we set people in the police. We set people in militias, you know, which is, which is legal by United States standards. You said, you know, that's why you set people all in these positions where we didn't do in the past. We didn't have police involved in the, in, black people involved in the police forces. We didn't have them involved in the courses. No, we didn't. <laughs> the fraternal, you're right. I agree. We did. Right. You're, you're right. right. What do you think about that? The fraternal do. order of police. But the now, Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. now we, we do get in. But do what do we get out of that? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Because okay. you know, okay. our courtrooms okay. are full. The prosecutors are black. The police are black. The judge is black. Okay. Everybody's the system is black. And the black defendant is going to prison. Oh, and the system is still corrupt. Okay, but and that's why. Y'all making my point for me. Let me just move back. But you still have to have people involved in it in order to make it transparent, Gideon. Can I speak, See, sir? I think, well, let go ahead, speak. Sorry. Yes. This, oh, I'm giving it a bust. Come on, y'all. Okay, let's go. Okay, yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, let's go. Speak how on. do we change the system without having to vote for it? What you do is you can interdict at the pardons and paroles. At, at, you know, what, what do people have to do when they have to pay uh, the, uh, what is the guy they have to pay every week? Probation, probation, officer. Officer. The probation, probation officer. officer. See, but the, why one, the, way, man, hold on. Okay. the person that leaves jail after a certain time, if the uh, parole system was designed to help, they would be connected to employment for these people when they come out of jail. If our people wanted to advocate for the children that are coming out of these corrupt systems, mm -hmm. they would mandate, make it mandate. They'd either shut that parole system down or they'd be forced to involve and create an economic employment arm of the parole system so that not only would these people be educated, they could be trained and they'd have an ability to pay the money that so they're going to be forced steps, to pay. But what you steps are you making? In a recidivism what's rate. Right. You, gotta vote. Vote. you gotta vote for that. No, you right. don't. Yes, I'm you like, that's, yes, you do. that's, Cause that's Because how do they get the money for that? No, it's not money. Yes, people it is. Yes, it is. Advocate no, no, no. for you. No, 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 no. Yes, meant it's called sponsorship. <laughs> oh, she got something to say, <laughs> Lemma. <Marissa. laughs> you, you look like you touched a nerve with, 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 with Marissa, but <laughs> so what you're talking about? So, so almost twenty thousand people get out of prison every year in Georgia. Okay. Right. So the the Department of Corrections has all these programs that they um, claim. Mm. Right. They have that are available, but available to a very small percentage of, of people. So two about two thousand people participate in these programs, right? But 20,000 people get out, mm -hmm. right? And what they say as far as why they are, how they are able to do what they're able to do in the lives of these people, and they'll tout 97% of them never return to the system or not, they all get jobs or whatever it is about that stat, about what happens when you get serious and focused with a certain population of people that can get them connected to opportunities in their community. We do well there, right? But what they'll say is why they don't deal with the other 16, 17,000 of them is the lack of funding. They don't have the space. They don't have the resources. So if we want a system, right, that is for every person that is a part of it to be able to avail themselves of certain opportunities, then you're talking about a law or regulation that would change the way that the, that's funded, the programs that are available, making sure that it's available to everyone and not just some. That doesn't happen by just asking the, the, the corrections to move. They're going to tell you, I'd love to. I think our transitional program is great. Just don't have any money. Okay, okay. 
this is a great discussion <laughs> and debate, and I re we really do appreciate your time, Miss Marissa Dotson from the it. Georgia no, Justice Department. No, we gonna have you back on. We Marissa. um we gotta start wrapping up, so yeah, we're gonna right. give our closing statements. We'll start with you, Marissa. Let the people know what you want them to know uh, about DJP and and uh, how they can get involved with your group. Um, so again, thank you all so much for having me. Um, I encourage you all to check out our website. Um, and that's the best way to stay connected to what we're working on. I encourage you to vote um, and to register, <laughs> which tomorrow is the last day to register. So if you haven't registered to vote, do that. Um, and uh, I will, we will continue to keep every, everyone abreast to what's going on at the Capitol and around the state with, with regards to this issue. Get in. I just want to thank this beautiful princess <laughs> with a bright okay. mind and intelligence and articulation. For yes, sir. In the yes, arena sir. with this, you know, there's a lot of intellectual yes, slaying going on. Yeah. <laughs> However, you came in and did some slaying in your set. Yeah, so yeah, you went yeah. shy about it. We want to thank you. I want to thank Black and my brother Vince for uh, tolerating an old head up in here, mm -hmm. revolutionary. And uh, just uh, praise the, all praise to be to the Most High in the name of His anointed Son, Yeshua. Um, I know you won't now, uh, on that one, but again, Miss uh, <laughs> Marissa Dotson, I'd like to thank you for coming on the show. Um, I must say I'd never heard of the Georgia Justice Project before. I knew you were coming on and did my research. Um, but th for those of you out there who may need their services, you know if you're committing crimes and poor <laughs> and need some help, <laughs> you know who you are. I'll oh, say this. Rich, you let the rich off. Uh, oh, wow. The rich don't need GJP. Oh, wow. uh, but they do have, I, I would uh, say you go on their Facebook page and like their Facebook page as I did yesterday. Uh, they have over 25 years of criminal justice experience. They have strong community, legislative, and judicial uh, system trust. Yes. Uh, I have to question that. Yeah. We have to talk to you about yeah. that at a different time. <laughs> the advisory board has two former chief justices of the Georgia Supreme Court. They have partnerships with law schools in Atlanta at Mercer and Fordham, and they've been nationally recognized for innovation and impact, and they're winners of the Families Count Award, uh, the recipient of the Martin Luther King Community Service Award, and the recipient of the Albert P. Tuttle Award from the Anti-Defamation League. So they do have a very good reputation in the city of Atlanta, so check them out. Okay, and I'm gonna close out. Can we get you back on, Marissa? Of course. Okay, I gotta get you on here with Yanga. He's one of my, you know, he's one of my, he's my. <laughs> Yanga! Yeah, so Yanga, you see this, you see how they, they done overtook me, so, <laughs> yeah. Cause you know, I normally just produce and let Yanga handle this, but I had to sit in for him, so, uh, you know, I had to worry. We appreciate shot, your right? input, well, brother. Thank you. Black side. Yeah. All right. Thank All you. right. Well, Rizzo, 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 we're going to get Rizzo. you convinced back on Dixon. We're going to have you back on soon because this we got to continue this conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank, you, you, thank yeah. you very much. Well, thank you. you. Welcome. Thank anytime. You. I'm a survivor. <laughs> thank you for tuning in. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> thank you All for tuning in. Peace. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Whoop, daddy. Well, that was a good conversation, wasn't it? We got Thank you, man. Remember now you have a mic. Um, <laughs> oh. As you slide your seat back, I don't want you oh, to trip. Oh, yes.